All the systems that we've been worked on, we've proved, apart from the engine starting system, and we're about to do that now. So you'll either see the propellers rotate, or you'll hear a lot of hysterical laughter. <laughs> so I'm off to the cockpit to go and supervise the button presser. Three, three. Excellent. It's made my day, that has. Britain's powerful Lancaster bombers, preparing for another night raid on Nazi Germany. The Lancaster was one of the most versatile bombers of the Second World War and brought about a change in Bomber Command's tactics and success. Away and over the sea they roar, loaded with bombs. Each bomb big enough to blast an area of ten city blocks. Its ability to carry huge weights allowed Toolboy and Grand Slam bombs to be used to target viaducts and rocket installations. Just Jane first arrived here at Lynx Aviation Heritage Centre in 1988. Restoring her to flight is the biggest project the museum has ever undertaken. The centre is a family run centre. It was originally set up by my grandfather and great uncle. So I was one when the aircraft came here um, on trailers into the, the museum here. So I've known nothing but the, the museum and the Lancaster. It, it is my life really. I guess the aircraft's more of a family member than it is a, a museum asset. There's that saying of how do you eat an elephant and it's a bite at a time. So if we look at the project as a whole, it looks like a massive undertaking and a big deal. But actually when you break it down into to pieces, it, it's quite uh, easily done really. The structure of the aircraft is very simple, it's all just stringers, performers and uh, stressed skin. So it's a fairly standard simple aircraft, it's just very big. Restoring Just Jane to flight will take many years, but this left the museum with a problem. During the summer months, she earns her keep by taxiing tourists up and down the runway, and this revenue would fund her restoration. She couldn't simply be taken out of action for a matter of years. Instead, they began contacting aviation museums around the world, asking for donor Lancaster parts. France lent them some old wings. A crushed rear fuselage came from Yorkshire. Bit by bit, they're fixing the old donated parts, switching them on to Just Jane so she can still operate, restoring her original parts, then swapping them back. Eventually, she'll be fully restored without missing a season. What is the um, We've got to order new bolts for this, so we've got to make sure we, the ones we order are not too long. So I'm measuring all the depths of the hulls with this. The museum has a passionate restoration team, many of them volunteers. Some with years of experience, others less so. Uh, look, I sort of want to be part of the success of this. I want to see this thing, I want to live long enough to see this thing go in the air, you know. I was office, office job, yeah. Clean hands, but not anymore. <laughs> Across the hangar, Dave is fixing up an old donated fuselage so they can swap it out and restore just Jane's own. This is what we are faced with initially was because um, obviously it had been crushed by the, the hangar roof falling, so we've had to make brand new ones like these, so all the cutouts and lighting holes to put in, and then once that's all in position, I, you can see the new ones in blue. It's an iconic aircraft that everybody in Lincolnshire um, can relate to, so um, the fact that there's only two in the world that are flying, if we get this one flying number three locally, it would just be wonderful. One of the first things we did when we decided to get the aircraft airworthy was to order four airworthy engines. Um, these are them here. So we, uh, we had one originally from the aircraft which was restored and then we managed to source three others. Um, they're all original wartime engines um, but hadn't been running for potentially 50, 60 years uh, when we bought them. They cost about £100,000 um, each to overhaul um, and they're worth a re around £130,000, £140,000 each. Uh, biggest problem being, of course, there's four for a Lancaster, so it's it's quite a healthy investment um, and cost to, to keep them running. Each engine is uh, allowed to run for about 500 hours be between overhauls, so after each 500 hour period it then goes away to be overhauled for another uh, £100,000 to be zero hour again. Um, so we need to have some spares as well to, to rotate through the aircraft. 
Back in the hangar, electrician Sven has another instrument to test. The PITO system uses airflow through a tube to measure the speed the aircraft is moving through the air. Because Just Jane is clearly stationary, Sven is pumping air down the pipe, simulating the aircraft moving to see if it works. You should see the airspeed indicator start to come up. Um, as I put more and more pressure. So if you imagine the faster the aircraft goes, the higher the pressure is in the system. And we should be approaching about 115 knots now. A lot of this stuff um, was still in use in the, in the 80s and the 90s. It wasn't until Typhoon came in that modern digital systems really started to creep into the aircraft. Of course, it's all digital systems now, and nobody, well, very few of us now, actually know how all this kit works. I'd retired and I was, uh, and I wanted an outlet for my, well, to keep you sane basically, because you can only sit at home for so long, watch your daytime TV before your brain dribbles out your ears. The whole aircraft needs rewiring if Just Jane is to pass civil aviation authority standards, but Spen is in it for the long run. Just there. mind your head as you come up. As long as health dictates that I can do it, I shall do it. You sit in the pilot's seat and you look around you and you just think, Wow, how on earth did they do it? It's very cramped in there, it's like a reverse TARDIS. Uh, it's easy to get into, but it's very difficult to get out of, especially if you're in a hurry. And you, th you, you, you think, what brave men they were. They really were. And you talk to some of the old boys, they say, well, weren't you scared? And I said, well, during the briefing, yeah, we were terrified. But once you're on board, the engines are running, you taxi in, you can't go anywhere, you've just got to settle down and get on with your job and hope you make it back. What more can you say? It's what it represents rather than, than what it is, really. To us, it represents the lives of, of those that lost their lives on Bomber Command during World War II. So getting a flying again is, is kind of the ultimate memorial that the most we can do in memory of Bomber Command. So it, it signifies an awful lot to us and, and to a lot of people. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.